Hey, Zach here from digitalconstructive.com. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the C10 license, also known as the electrical contractor license. So an electrical contractor places, installs, erects, or connects any electrical wires, fixtures, appliances, apparatus, raceways, conduits, solar photovoltaic cells, or any part thereof, which generate, transmit, transform, or utilize electrical energy in any form or for any purpose. And that definition is straight from the CSLB website. Now, the CSLB is the Contractor State License Board. They govern all contractors in the state of California. So essentially, if you're looking to charge over $500 for any electrical services in the state of California, you've got to have a C10 license. Now, how long does it take to get a C10 license? On average, you're looking at a time frame of about 90 days. Now, there are a few things that can make this take a lot longer than 90 day days, but on average, that's about how long it's taking. You know, the time of year that you send the application, whether or not you have a criminal history, or whether or not your application is put up for review are all factors that can make the 90 days, you know, it, it'll be a lot longer than 90 days, basically. But on average, you're looking at about six to eight week application processing time and then maybe three to four weeks after that before you actually go and take the test. Now, what are the basic requirements for the C10 license? You've got to have you got to be at least 18 years of age. You've got to have a driver's license or USAID. You've got to have a social security or ITIN number. And you can't currently be on probation or parole. Now, the basic experience requirements are that you have at least four years full-time journey-level experience as an electrician within the last 10 years. So that means that you can, you can do all of the duties associated with being an electrician unsupervised, and you've done that at least four years within the last 10 years. You've got to have somebody who can sign off on that experience, so that's somebody other than yourself who can verify that you do have that experience. And then you've got to be able to document your experience if the state board asks you to. So if the CSLB asks you to document your experience, you'll have to document it. Now, who can sign off on your experience? You can have a general contractor. You could have a C10 license holder. You could have a foreman or supervisor. You could have a fellow journeyman or fellow employee of a company if you work for a company. Or you could have a business associate. So maybe a homeowner, somebody who, you know, you've done a bunch of jobs for that person could verify your experience as a journeyman uh, electrician. So filling out the application, when you're filling out the application, the CSLB is going to want your qualifying person to write a description of your work experience. So for example, you know, Bill's a great guy. He rewired our house. The CSLB will not accept that because it's just not descriptive enough. They're going to want to see something more like Bill has worked with AC and DC wiring, 440 V wiring, underground wiring. He's worked above and below normal elevation and his red phase rotation meters. Just an example. Something very descriptive of what exactly Bill knows how to do. So whoever you choose to sign off for you on your contractor license application, that person is going to have to provide a brief description, and that description is going to have to be detailed. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're filling out your application. Now, what's on the electrical license exam? So there's going to be two parts. There's going to be 115 questions specific on contractor law, and that's the same law test that roofers take, plumbers take, you know, uh, concrete, every contractor trade has to take the same law exam. You're going to have another 115 questions specific to the C10 license. You'll have three hours to complete each portion. It's a multiple choice exam and it's done on site on a computer. And you can bring a translator if you need to. So what's on the C10 license exam? 26% of the exam is going to be planning and estimation. 24% is going to be rough wiring. 11% is going to be finished wiring and trim. 21% of the exam is going to be startup, troubleshooting, and maintenance. And 18% of the test is going to be safety. Now, if you're looking for a more detailed 
look at what exactly is going to be on the contractor license exam, I would suggest you come visit our website. We have a full breakdown of everything you need to know for the test. But this is kind of a snapshot of what you need to know for the C10 license exam. So after you pass the test, you're going to know immediately. It's done on a computer, so you'll get the results of your exam right there on the spot. You can retake the exam. Uh, you've got to pass it within six months. Um, right now, it costs $60 to retake the test, uh, but you can absolutely retake the exam. One thing to keep in mind is if, for example, you pass the law but fail the trade, you only retake the trade. If you pass the trade but fail the law, you only retake the law. So you only retake the exam that you failed. And usually you can get your retake within three weeks. I've seen situations where people actually got it sooner than that, but generally three weeks, three weeks you'll go back and take the exam again. And after you pass, you've got to pay a license activation fee, which I cover in a video uh, covering the, the current fees uh, for, you know, right this year. And you've got to provide what's called a contractor bond number. I've got a separate video on exactly what exactly is a bond, um, you know, because it's kind of a lot to cover in just in this video, but that's something you're going to definitely want to watch. So those are the two things that you need to have when you pass the exam. You've got to have pay your license activation fee and provide a contractor bond number. And usually you get your contractor license card in the mail, usually within a couple weeks. So now what are the costs? How much does it cost to get a contractor license? Um, you've got to pay a state application fee. You've got to pay a license activation fee every two years. And you've got to pay for fingerprinting. And you've got to provide a contractor bond fee. I've got a video covering all the current fees that you'll definitely want to check out. I always update that video so you know exactly what are the current fees for how much it costs to get the C10 license. Now, in conclusion, I uh, just want to say thank you for watching this video first and foremost. But obviously, um, you know, getting your license is a very smooth process if you have the correct information. You want to know what's on the exam. You want to make sure that your application is filled out correctly. And obviously, you know, you want to make sure that you're prepared for the test. Um, you know, my name is Zach. Thank you for watching. Hope this video has been helpful for you. Um, for any additional information, check out all of our other videos. We've got videos on every single other license. We've got videos on certifications. We've got videos on all kinds of different things. And if there's something you want to see us make a video on, drop it in the comments and we'll, we'll definitely make a video about it. Um, but, you know, give us a thumbs up, drop us a comment. If you, you know, enjoyed this, subscribe to our channel. Again, my name is Zach from digitalconstructive.com and thanks again for watching.